Meanwhile, Matteo, what's happened to Milan? They've fallen back down to earth. This was the worry the whole entire first half of the season. I feel like we talked about this so much every week. Is, is this going to continue? Can this genuinely go on like this, like what we saw in 2020, where Milan won almost 30 games undefeated in Serie A? They showed plenty of character. They would always bounce back from adversity. And now, four losses. I'm fine with the losses against Juventus and Atalanta. And Stefano Pioli came out and said that he thought the only real loss that Milan deserved to not pick up any points was last weekend against Spezia. I wouldn't necessarily agree. I thought Atalanta deserved to win against Milan. But even in this game, Inter were better in every department. And for this Milan side that has now gotten back so many of their key players, and you think of Hakan Shalonoglu, uh, who was injured for so long and so important. Yes, they got back Benacetti, also got injured in the Red Star game on Thursday, but Ibrahimovic is back. They had their first choice center back pairing, and it's almost gone back to how it was before 2020, where they just can't seem to pick up points in these big games. Is it worrying? I mean, I think before the season, any Milan fan, anyone maybe from the club itself would have signed on the dotted line to finish in fourth place. They've been punching above their weight, and you know what it reminds me of, Dan? The Lazio situation after the post-lockdown era, they were one point behind Juventus, but then because of the congested calendar, they didn't have the depth, they didn't have the quality of Juventus, and they fell off the pace. I feel like this is what's happening now with Milan and the fact that they're also pay playing in the Europa League. Mm. They just don't have the talent that Inter do, and Juventus to a lesser extent, but Juventus aren't playing up to their capabilities. Gab, we're in a situation where Milan could genuinely not finish in the top four. No, and I don't get all this doom and gloom. I mean, first of all, look, it's four points. It's not ten points. It's four points, right? Uh, we talk about, ooh, the Europa League, Europa League. Milan might not be in the Europa League uh, this time next week. So that excuse will go out the, uh, out the window. Um, they were missing Benacer, who I think is, is absolutely critical uh, to this team functioning. I think if Pioli to do it again, maybe you play somebody like Rafael Leao, you get a little bit more front foot uh, in a game like this. And and you lost to a very good inter side where everything clicked. But um, I think there's still a lot to come from this season. I think they they added they addressed the depth in January for precisely that reason, bringing in other players from Tomori to 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 to, to Meite. Um, so I, I think you know Milan are still up there. I think they're still they're still fighting for the Serie A title, and uh, you, we know how inconsistent Inter can be and have been in the past. So. No, I think this race is going down to the wire. Jürgen, from a coach's perspective, how tricky is it where everything just seems to be going so well for such a, a long period as it was for Milan, and now the wheels are just starting to fall off slightly? Yeah, from, from a coaching's perspective, really, you got to kind of take the signals. You have to understand the signals that just happened over the last, you know, couple of games with, with AC Milan, especially you're playing the Europa League pretty much with a completely different team like they did today against Inter. And when you get a lesson like today from Inter and it doesn't work out at all, um, obviously it, it, it should tell you something. So now it is very, very important for Stefano Pioli is, is really calm everybody down and keep them focused, keep them in, in, yeah, in the run. Um, what worried me a little bit today was certainly that they were not only outplayed, they were also physically completely dominated by, by Inter. You know, if you look at the two center backs, Romagnoli and Kier, they, they lost so many one-on-one -on -one battles today against Lukaku and, and, and uh, Martinez. Um, that, that would worry me a little bit. So um, definitely they have to understand the signals that they received today from this game um, and make sure that they're not sliding into a negative period. Uh, are you with Gab, Matteo? It's not all doom and gloom. They're still in the title race. I don't think it is all doom and gloom. The, the whole point is they finished top four. It's a very successful season. I think Inter is going to win the Scudetto. I've been saying it for a long time that they're the favorites. Yes, they're only four points off the pace. But based on the, the last month and a half, let's say, since 2021, the performances have completely changed. And this is after they got back some of their key players. They just don't look like the same side that they were in 2020. They look like they've fallen back down to earth. And yes, four points, but... I mean, if you lose to Spezia like they did last weekend, that to me was the most troubling sign because that was also a cruel reminder of what life was like for Milan for much of the 2010s where they were outplayed and outclassed 
by teams that they had maybe 10 times the wage bill and that were fighting to even stay in the top flight. So last week was a reminder, and Jurgen made a really interesting point that this is the time for Stefano Pioli, who, by the way, historically has always started very well, and then things have tapered off. This is something that we've seen now in many different jobs that he's had in Serie A. Not saying that that's the case. I still think that Stefano Pioli has really squeezed every ounce of juice that he could out of this squad. But I, I really feel like this is the, the, the big breakaway now for Inter. And I, I just don't see Milan being able to catch them just based on Inter's overall talent, the depth. And that Antonio Conte seems to really figure out this team, that they're one of the most devastating counterattacking sides. And the defense has gotten a lot better. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.